So now what we want to do is we want to take our first CATIA model and uh, put it into Mode Printer to be able to test it. So we have to save a uh, version of this model. Just gonna put it on my desktop. Uh, tier one. And open Mode Frontier. And basically Mode Frontier uh, is a software that just generates uh, data and can work with other software. And for this class, we're gonna use it to control CATIA models. And what it does is it can input data into a model and get data back. So if you remember in CATIA, we set up these three parameters that control the model and these three that get data back. And Mode Frontier is gonna look at those inputs and outputs and then use its algorithmic uh, or its genetic algorithm to kind of generate new models. Um, so what we want to do is we want to set up an initial workflow in this window uh, that can uh, run that experiment for us. And there is just a few kind of typical modules that, or nodes that you'll be using. Um, you start with these logic nodes. Every workflow starts with a scheduler. And the scheduler basically defines uh, your data, how it's generating the initial set of models, and then how it's us using the genetic algorithm to generate new generations of models. Um, the next node is the CATIA node, which is under these CAD nodes. You can see, uh, besides CATIA, there's also other software that it can sync with. Um, I think there's SOLIDWORKS is the only one I really know but we're just gonna be using CATIA. So to connect modules together, you just click the circle and you can drag it to the arrow and now you made a connection. And down here in the logic log, it's gonna tell you any errors. So right now we haven't specified anything, so it's giving us all these errors, but you kind of can go one by one and correct all these. And once there's no errors, you can run the experiment. So the next node, so basically what it's doing is generating data in the scheduler it's putting that data into CATIA, and then the final node is always this check mark. It's the end of the logic sequence. So we connect the CATIA node into that check mark. Now we want a way that we can feed inputs into CATIA. That's what this input arrow is, and then uh, monitor the outputs, and that's what this output connector is. So input nodes are here. There's an input variable. Specify the first one, and we connect that into CATIA, and then there's an output variable, and we connect that into CATIA like that. And then once it gets the output, it has to have a way of measuring that uh, to see, to kind of fuel its uh, genetic algorithm. And to do that, we have design objectives. So design objectives are always uh, output from the outputs, connected like that. So basically what's happening uh, in the genetic algorithm is it's getting data, it's putting that data into inputs, opening CATIA, loading those inputs in, getting the outputs, and then for each output, it has a certain objective. So say we have floor area, we want floor area to be maximum. Each time it runs the experiment, it'll get floor area as an output, and then if this is maximized, it'll know that it wants to maximize that floor area. So let's just set up this workflow uh, for the model we created. Now we know we have three inputs, so we can make three of these input nodes. Two, and you can connect each one to here. And the shortcut for connecting the nodes is you can actually double click any of these connectors, and it'll come up with everything you connect into. So we want to connect into CATIA, check mark, and it'll make that connection. And we also know that we have three outputs. So we just make three of these. Two. And then each output will be an objective. So it might seem strange that there's outputs and objectives, but uh, you won't necessarily always have every output be an objective. Uh, maybe you just want to monitor something, but you don't want it to affect the algorithm. So in that case, you wouldn't put it as an objective. You only want objectives to be things that you want to optimize for, meaning that it will tailor the algorithm to the optimization of these objectives. So you can see there's a lot of red check marks. We haven't defined anything. So now we go through and define um, all the
all these different components of the workflow. We can start with our inputs. Um, here we define the range of numbers that it's going to be inputting and what the step is. So say we, we have um, a measurement that we want to fluctuate anywhere from 1 meter to 10 meters. And here we would put uh, 1 meter, which it's in millimeters, so it's 1,000. And here we would put 10 meters. And we want it incrementing by, say, 10. And the step is 1 meter. So basically, every time it runs an experiment, it will put a value into this parameter anywhere between 1 and 10 meters. So it could do 2, 3, 5, whatever. OK, so that's ready. And we want to do that uh, for this other one, too. Remember, this first um, parameter is going to be related to the first parameter here, which is the width of the core. So this will be between 1 and 10. And you want to tailor each of these input nodes to what you're controlling in the model. So this is another length. So we want to set the same thing. We want the smallest measurement to be 1 meter and the biggest to be 10 meters. And we want it to have 10 steps. Okay. And now this is a little different. As you remember, it's controlling the overhang ratio. So we want, say we want that ratio to go anywhere from 0.1, which will make a really uh, no overhang or inset, actually, to 2, which will make a big overhang. So in Mode Frontier, we define that as well. We could go from 0.1 to 2, and say again we want a step of 10, which will give you some uh, increment here. And because you're relating specifically to uh, inputs in your model, it's always best just to rename these so you know you can kind of keep track of what you're going to be controlling. And we can just name them the same things as the Katia ones and just make it easier to link them later. So this one is core width. Next one is uh, floor offset. And the last one is overhang ratio. Okay, so now our inputs are set up. Next we want to set up um, Actually, there's nothing really set up in the outputs, but we want to set up our objectives. Basically, how objectives work is you have to tell Katia how you want the objective to look at the output, and you do that through this user expression. So for each objective, you have to go in here. It'll tell you what is hooked into it. So here it's just output 6. And in this case, we want the objective to be just the output. Usually, you can, you can do some... Uh, kind of other algebra, but we want just output 6. And then we want to tell Mode Frontier what kind of objective it is, um, either maximize or minimize. So in order to figure that out, we're going to go back to our CATIA model and figure out what our outputs are and how we want to set up the objectives to, um, to uh, optimize the model. So remember, our three outputs are area of the core, area of the floor, and area of the footprint. And here you want to kind of think about what you're really looking for and what you want to optimize and how you want to set up your experiment to do that. So say for this experiment, we really want to see how we can uh, maximize the area of the core and maximize the floor area, but minimize the footprint. So already, that's sort of an interesting experiment, but you can kind of predict what would happen. If it's trying to minimize this area but maximize all the other areas, it's going to create a large overhang, right? But uh, for a first experiment, it's OK. So here we want, again, to name these things uh, related to what they are in the model. So we have area core, area floor, and area footprint. And then we also want to name the objectives. So usually they're the same. Just add OBJ in front of it, core. J floor and OBJ footprint. Okay, and now we can go back in here and specify what kind of objectives we have. Area core we want to maximize. So that's good, and we want to change this again to be whatever this is. And you can see here, area core is an input. Okay, and now the X goes away. This is happy. Now for area floor, again, we want to maximize it. We want to change this user expression to be the output. And then footprint now, 
again we change the expression but this time we want to minimize the footprint and what this is going to do is going to create competing objectives and give the software something to kind of problem to work on okay so now that we've set up the inputs and the outputs